Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at creating a seamless diagonal stripe watercolour pattern in Adobe Photoshop. Now if you don't have some stripes I suggest you head to a site such as Vecdeasy. This is where I got my stripes from. This person here, Harry Arts, has some really good stripes that you can use. What you're looking at is having a piece of this stripe that you're able to use that is fairly even in width. That's going to make life a little bit easier. Harry Arts' stuff is very good. I recommend it highly. I just looked up watercolour brush strokes. Now I did have to take this into Illustrator, the EPS file that I downloaded. I took into Illustrator so I could get rid of the white text that was over it and then I made sure that I saved it as a really large size ping image so I could open it here in Photoshop and I've just cut it up so that I've actually got each of these paint lines on a separate layer and it is a smart object. That's the way I'm going to save them so that I can come and use them anytime that I need to use them. But for today we're just going to grab one of these stripes and create a new pattern from it. So I provided you've got the ability to isolate a stripe with a sort of transparent background around it. We're going to start with a new document that we can use our stripe on. This particular document's 2000 by 2000 pixels. So I'm thinking a document that's 800 by 800 is going to work really well for this size stripe. So I'm going to choose File, New. I've got a document 800 by 800. It's bringing in its own white background. Let's go and get one of these stripes. Again, what I suggested was to find something that has a nice sort of even area through it. So I'm thinking this one or this one or this one. Any of those would be reasonably good choices. I'm going to take this one because it is a little bit tricky. Let's drag and drop it into our document. Now I'm going to rotate it while I still have it selected and try and position it. I'm going to use as much of it as I can, but I don't want the ends. I'm going to try and make sure that this and this are about the same length and that I get the same thing at the other end, which obviously I'm not getting at all. So let's just go and get that. The closer you can be to getting these two lengths equal and to be equal to what you've got down here, the easier everything's going to be. But I want to make it a little bit tricky because I want to make it easier for you to see how you're going to fix up any problems. So I'm just going to click the check mark here. Now, I have got this as a smart object. Right now I'm going to rasterize it so it's just pixels. But also, being just pixels, there are bits outside the edge of the artboard. And I don't want that to be the case because it's going to make life really tricky. So I'm going to the crop tool. I'm going to make sure that it's not set to any ratio, but I do have delete cropped pixels enabled. And I'm just going to press enter a few times to get rid of those crop pixels. Now you can check to make sure that there's nothing left outside by choosing image and reveal all. And if there's something left outside, this image is going to expand to reveal what's outside the artboard. So that's just a heads up for checking to make sure that there's nothing extra because otherwise life is going to be very unpleasant. So I'm going to make a duplicate of this layer. So I just drag it onto that little plus sign there. So I've got two of my lines and the top one I'm going to apply what's called an offset filter to. This is going to be setting up our pattern. So I'll choose Filter Other and then Offset. And because my master document was 800 by 800, I'm just going to send this to 400 by 400. So I'm using half the width and half the height as my offset. 400 and 400 and I'm selecting Wrap Around. So what you should see is something like this. You should have a line across each corner and you should have something across the middle. Here you can see that it's not a complete line, but that's fine because we kept a copy of the complete line underneath. So I'm just going to click OK. And because I'm seeing this break here really, really clearly, I'm going to move this whole line above the broken one. So that's just going to even things out. I'm going to merge these together by right clicking and choose Merge Layers because this is going to become the basis of my pattern. Now we join things up across the middle so the first thing we're going to look at is is there anything we need to clean up in the middle and what I want to clean up is this bump here. So I'm going to the lasso tool because sometimes the lasso tool is just the easiest tool to use. I'm going to lasso around a 
piece of this edge. Now I can take a fairly big sample because the background is actually separate to the artwork itself. So I'm grabbing a fairly sizable piece of the stripe, but none of the background at all. I'm going to put this on a new layer, layer new, layer via copy. So I've got my stripe bit all by itself on a layer. And what I'm going to do is manipulate it so it sort of fits in this area a bit. And all I'm going to do to do that here is to hold down the control or command key and just line that up a little bit better. So I'm just stretching it. I'm stretching it a little bit so that it fills in that area and we don't have a bump. And then I'm going to merge it down, just merge down so that again I have my paint strokes on a separate layer. That's critical. You don't want to jam them together with the background at this point. So now that we've fixed the middle, let's make sure that everything lines up. And to do this, we're just going to repeat that offset. I'm going to make a duplicate of this layer first. And let's apply that offset to the topmost version because we might be able to use the bottom one to help ourselves out a little bit. Filter other offset. 400 and 400 is our offset. I'll click OK. I'm going to put the bottom layer on top of the top one and let's just make sure that everything looks nice and neat. If it didn't, we would just patch this middle area up because that's where the problems are going to be. Any difficulties that you've got with this pattern are going to be in this area here. And all you would do is merge everything together, merge these two layers together, go and grab a piece of the problem area using, for example, the lasso tool. So you're just going to grab a piece of the problem, layer new, layer via copy, and then you're going to stretch it out, like just maneuver it into position, holding the control key so you can stretch it and you can use it to cover up any lumps or bumps that you have in this middle section here. Because as I said, that's going to be where the problems are. If I want my pattern to bring in its background, I can just now go and save this as a pattern. So I'm going to choose Edit, Define Pattern. I'm going to call this YouTube because I know I do have some other patterns that I've created. I'll click OK. So now let's go and create a brand new document that we can use to test our pattern. Now our pattern piece is 800 by 800. So if we make a document, for example, scrapbook paper size, 3600 by 3600, we'll be able to test our pattern really well. To test it, layer, new fill layer, pattern, click OK. I'm going to select the last pattern in my list, which is this YouTube pattern. And as you can see, I now have a seamless diagonal line pattern. There are actually a couple of repeats in here. That's a repeat there. There's one there. There's one there. I do have a slight white line there. So at this point, I might go back to this element and just see if I can improve it. I'm going to take this layer and I'm going to reapply that offset filter to it. And that's where I'm seeing this problem area here. So I'm just going in with the spot removal tool because that's going to cover up this area. I can just get rid of it very easily that way. Now you can continue to do that offset filter just to check because the problems that you're going to see are going to be in the middle here. So let me just go and resave that. Edit Define Pattern YouTube 2. Come back into our document, double click on the fill layer thumbnail here and go and get the next pattern, which is the one we just created. This is a better version of it still. I would always play around with these patterns, get them into a document, have a look, see if there's anything that you want to change or get rid of that might give you a more seamless look to your pattern. But that is a nice seamless repeating pattern here in Photoshop. Now, if, for example, I wanted an extra stripe in here, I would have room for a pink stripe. Let's see what I would do. I'm going back into my document here. I'm going to just grab a pattern out of this stripe, not with the background, so that I can stack it on top of the existing one. So I'll choose Edit and then Define Pattern. This is going to be YouTube 3. Let's go back to our document here. I'm going to add that pattern as a new layer. Layer, new, fill layer, pattern. Click OK. Go to the very last pattern, which is YouTube 3, and click on it. 
Now it's going exactly over the original pattern, but I can move it so I can grab it and use it to fill the space. And I can even offset it slightly by just dragging it around. So it's not lined up perfectly with the first pattern. So here we have a thicker diagonal stripe pattern just created by doubling up on this pattern. So I've stacked it on top of itself twice. Now, of course, because I've got this as two separate layers, it's also possible to recolor one of these. Let's just select the bottommost one and I'm going to choose layer, new adjustment layer, hue saturation, click OK. I'm just going to walk this around so that now I've got the ability to create two different color stripes here just by recoloring one of these layers. This adjustment layer here is affecting everything underneath, which is just one of these patterns. It's having no effect at all on the topmost layer. So there is like two color diagonal stripe pattern made really fairly easily when you consider it in Adobe Photoshop. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results, then you'll love my Skillshare content. I'm a Skillshare top teacher. I have hundreds of short courses on Skillshare that you can access along with thousands of other great courses, all for the price of a single subscription. If you're interested, there's a Skillshare coupon for you in the description below to use to sign up. Using this coupon benefits me as a creator and it helps me continue to make free content available here for you also on YouTube. Thank you for joining me for this video tutorial. On the screen now you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you. If you enjoyed the video you've just watched, I know that you're going to really enjoy the one I've picked for you to watch next.